this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate my method for knitting a stockinette gauge swatch. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. So I'm going to show you my process for knitting a flat stockinette gauge swatch. So this is the type of swatch that you would knit before you started a project that you were going to be knitting flat. You should be doing your gauge swatches in the same manner that you will be knitting your project. So if you're going to be knitting flat, then your swatch should be knit flat. If you're going to be knitting in the round, then your swatch should be either be knit in the round or it should simulate knitting in the round. And I have a video on how that's done that I'll link to at the top here. So there are different ways of knitting a gauge swatch. My method is to incorporate a garter stitch border around the edges. Part of the process of knitting a gauge swatch is washing the swatch at the end to see if your gauge changes. And I just find that this is an easier method um, to make that happen. Some knitters really object to knitting a garter stitch border around a stockinette swatch because there are some gauge differences between garter stitch and stockinette that they feel uh, it can interfere with getting an accurate measurement. So that can be true for some swatches that have garter stitch borders, but the method that I use really mi minimizes any effect that the garter stitch uh, gauge could have on the stockinette. When I start my project, I look, if I'm following a pattern, the pattern is going to tell me what the recommended gauge is over four inches or 10 centimeters. And it's going to tell me what size needle that they recommend to get that gauge. So what you're trying to do with a gauge swatch is to determine what needle size you need to get that gauge because it's the gauge that's important. Some knitters are loose knitters, some knitters are tight knitters. So what you are trying to do is learn or confirm that you are using the correct needle size so that your project will come out the right size. So for my uh, pretend project, it calls for a worsted weight yarn and it wants 20 stitches over four inches or 10 centimeters. So I need to be able to measure across four inches. So I need to be able to measure 20 stitches without interference from the edges. So, and because I'm using a border, I want to cast on more stitches than those 20 stitches. So my method is to cast on the number of stitches uh, I need in four inches and then add six. So I need 20 stitches in four inches, so I'm going to cast on 26. Okay, so I have my 26 stitches, and now I'm going to work five or six rows of garter stitch, enough to give me a border. So I have cast on my 26 stitches, and I've worked about five rows of garter stitch. So now I'm going to transition to the stockinette portion, and I'm going to work some increases that are going to do two things to compensate for the difference between garter stitch gauge and stockinette gauge. This is a swatch where I did not do anything to compensate for the gauge, and what you'll see is that the bottom edge here is kind of curved like this and splays out. And that's because garter stitch is just a, stitches are just a little bit wider than stockinette. So when you have the same number of stitches in garter stitch and then stockinette, the, the garter stitch wants to flare out. And because garter stitch also has a row gauge that wants to compress and pull in the way that ribbing wants to pull in this way, this wants to, to pull in this way. It's very willing to pull in this way. And so when the edges flare out like that, that causes these to come down even more. So this is one of the objections that some knitters have to working a stockinette, a gauge swatch with garter stitch borders is because of this distortion of the gauge, especially near those edges. So uh, one thing that you can do is you can, when you wash a black, the, sw the swatch is you can elongate those edges, but you can't do anything about narrowing this down here. It's still going to be too, too wide compared to this. Uh, the other thing that some knitters uh, object to about this situation is that they feel like the, the stitches that are at that transition between the garter stitch and the stockinette 
are a little distorted and you can see that the stitches at this edge don't really look the same as the other stockinette stitches. Uh, the ones at this end for me uh, look pretty much the same but these do look a little different that doesn't necessarily mean that their gauge is different but that is the objection that some knitters have is that you can't include these stitches here because they are not going to give a good representation so my solution is to do a couple of increases in this first row as you transition from garter stitch to stockinette and that will do two things it increases the width of the stockinette to more closely at, uh, match the width of the garter stitch so you don't get that same flaring along the edge. And the other thing it does is it adds a couple of extra stitches that you can leave out when you are measuring later on. So you don't have to include these two edge stitches that are, are right next to the garter stitch when you're doing your measurements. You can exclude those and measure only the perfect stockinette stitches. So that's my solution. So the number of stitches that you increase is going to depend on the number of stitches you originally cast on for this uh, uh, stockinette section in the, in the middle. So I had cast on 20 stitches that I intended to, to work for stockinette because that's how many stitches I need over four inches. So I, for every 10 stitches that I cast on for the stockinette portion, I'm going to increase by one. So then I will end up with 22 stitches in the stockinette portion and I'll still have the three stitches at each edge. I want to place those increases. I want to, I don't want to place them right next to each other. And so I've worked my, my three stitches for my garter stitch border. And now I'm going to start in the stockinette portion. So I'm going to knit about five of the 20. And then I'm going to do a make one. You could do a knit front back. You could do whatever kind of increase you like. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to do a, um, a make one increase. And then I'm going to work another 10 stitches. And then I'm going to do another increase. Again, it doesn't matter what kind of increase you, you um, do. And the total number of stitches doesn't matter a whole lot. It's about one stitch for every 10 that you cast on for the stockinette. So if you needed 24 stitches, you could cast, you could increase by two stitches. If you had somewhere closer to 30 stitches, but not quite, then you could increase by three stitches. So now I'm going to work a wrong side row for the stockinette. So I still have my three stitch garter stitch border. So I'm knitting the first three stitches. And now I'm going to purl all the way across until there are three stitches remaining. So I've got three stitches remaining and now I just knit those. So the first three and last three will always be worked in garter stitch and the center will be worked in stockinette. So at this point I'm going to keep knitting until I have about two inches worth of stockinette. And then I'm going to take a prelim preliminary measurement of my gauge. So at this point, I've knit about a couple of inches and I've just finished a right side row. And this is the time when I like to really, I, I have enough knit that I can reliably measure across without worrying about interference from the top and the bottom edges. And I'm going to do this just to confirm that I have probably the correct needle. So remember, I am looking for 20 stitches over four inches and I have 22 in here. So I'm going to exclude the measurements between here and here. So I'm gonna look at what I have and lo and behold, I have actually exactly 20 stitches in that four inches. So I know that I can continue uh, knitting this swatch until I have four inches of stockinette and then I can do the border. So a lot of times, especially if you're working with a new yarn um, or a, yar a new yarn weight that you haven't uh, worked with before, you may not be getting uh, exactly the correct gauge and you might need to switch to a different needle size and see if you can get closer. So how close is close enough? Let's say that I measured, that I uh, measured across and I only had 19 stitches in my four inches. That would mean that I did not have enough stitches 
that means that would mean every stitch was just a little bit too big because I couldn't fit all 20 of them in the four inches. So if they're too big, then I need to use a smaller needle to make the stitches smaller. If instead I found that, um, that the 20 stitches were less than four inches, maybe they were three and a half or something like that, uh, then my stitches are too small and you need to go up a needle size. But what if you have something like 19 and a half stitches? In my experience in my knitting, I can change by one full stitch over four inches by changing a needle size. So if I had 19 stitches, I could change to a smaller needle and probably get uh, very, very close to 20 uh, stitches in my four inches. If I had 21 stitches over the four inches, I could use a little bit bigger needle and make those stitches a little bit bigger. But when I'm only a fraction of an end of a stitch off, then I kind of play it by ear a little bit and that, but you, that is a situation where if you're off by a little bit, you might want to experiment with a slightly larger or smaller needle and see how much closer you can get. You might find that with one needle size, you get 19 and a half stitches over four inches and with a, a different needle size, you get 20 and a half. And so then you have to decide, well, do I want um, my project to be slightly bigger or slightly smaller? So you do this preliminary measurement and if you think you need to change needle sizes, don't rip everything out and start over. Instead, get your other needle size, whether it's a larger needle or smaller, and as you work across this wrong side row with the smaller needle or the larger needle, whichever you're doing, work across all as knits and that will create a garter stitch ridge. And then get the second needle to that set of needles so that you're working two, two needles that are both smaller or both um, larger. And then continue on another two inches with the new needle size and take notes keep a little scrap of paper and write down what you did for the first uh, set of stitches and then the next set of stitches. Here's an example of a swatch where I use that technique of starting with one needle, checking my gauge, and realizing that my stitches were too small. So I worked across a wrong side row with all knits when I changed to a new needle, and then I used that larger set of needles for this portion. So this swatch is now uh, four inches long and I'm ready to transition back to the garter stitch. So for this, we need to eliminate those extra stitches that we added when we transitioned from garter stitch to stockinette. So now I'm going to, to work two decreases about in these two positions. So now I've worked my decreases and now I'm going to work, you know, five, about five rows or so of garter stitch and then I will bind off. So I've completed my, my swatch and as you see, it's kind of rolled up because stockinette wants to do that. When you first take knitting off the needles, it tends to be a, a bit stiff. So one of the, the steps of doing a gauge swatch is washing the swatch and then letting it dry. And you do that for two reasons. One is that the fabric is going to change when you wash it and you'll get a, an idea of what the fabric will truly be like uh, when your project is complete. Some knitters will experience that their uh, stitch side, their fabric is going to grow when it washes. So that's one of the things that you wanna find out. And you won't know if it's growing unless you measure it before you wash it and then measure it again later after you've washed it. So you want to measure this the way we did when we had gotten through the first two inches. You want to measure across that center and I'm again I'm going to leave out those two edge stitches because those were the ones um, that I added and I have my, my 20 stitches in four inches. Now, when you measure your row gauge, do not be surprised if it doesn't end up being whatever your pattern is recommending or whatever the ball band says. So row gauge is one of the hardest things to match. And one of the reasons for that is that 
Just because two yarns can be worked to the same stitch gauge on the same size needles doesn't mean that they're going to have the same row gauge. So it isn't that you can't get row gauge. It could be that the yarns are constructed differently and they just have different row gauges. So one aspect of having a different uh, row gauge, it could be the individual knitter, but it could be just the yarn itself. And it tends not to be as important. And the reason is, is because usually you are knitting to a specific length. So it doesn't matter if you need 28 rows to get four inches or 29 rows or 27, you're going to be knitting to that four inches regardless. So once you take your measurements, on your unwashed swatch, then you're going to wash it. So what you do is you, you wash it the way that the ball band recommends. So I'm using 100% wool, it is not super wash. And so I can soak this in warm water and I wanna do that for at least 20 minutes. Wool has a lot of air in it and it's gonna hold on to that air as long as it can. And it will take at least 20 minutes to really get soaked. I just soak it in a bowl of warm water and it can go for a couple hours, it could, but 20 minutes at least. Then you just squeeze the water out and then you roll it up in a towel to squeeze as much as you can. So uh, I just rolled this up into an old uh, kitchen towel. So this is my uh, washed swatch and it is still damp. So when I am dealing with this, I want to make sure that I'm not stretching it out. Wool is very easy to stretch and super wash wool in particular is very easy to stretch out. So what I want to do is just kind of smooth out the stitches so that the fabric is smooth and I'll, and I'll even uh, push it together a little bit just to make sure that I haven't stretched anything out. If I want to, I can um, pin these corners of the garter stitch if I wanted to. I don't really uh, need to uh, th because uh, this is preventing anything from rolling up too much. So this is a swatch I knit earlier. It's not the one that just came off the needles. And I, I measured this before I washed it. I was getting the same 20 stitches over four inches. If we uh, measure it now, uh, we can see that I'm actually only getting about 19 stitches over four inches and I probably could push this together a little bit more and get it a little bit smaller than that. My gauge appears to have changed once since I've washed this, but this is still wet. This is why we want it to dry completely and we don't want to have it stretched when we're drying because wool in particular is very amenable to blocking and I could stretch it and, and it might want to stay there. So I encourage it to, to push in as much as I can and then I let it just lie there and when it dries, um, it will usually pull back in a little bit if it's not having something pulling it open. So I would wait until it was fully dried and then I would measure it again. And in my experience, uh, my knitting uh, doesn't change after washing. It changes when the, when the fabric is wet, it's a little bit larger, but once it dries, it goes back into shape. But not all knitters do. So that's a uh, part of this process and what you're looking for when you're doing a gauge swatch. The goal of doing a gauge swatch is to find the needle size that you need to produce the correct gauge after the fabric has been washed. You want to take gauge measure measurements before and after washing so that you can be confident as you knit your project that you will end up with the correct finished size. As you gain knitting experience and gauge swatch experience, you'll be able to predict what needle size you need to get a particular gauge when using familiar yarns and familiar needles. And in many cases, you'll be able to just skip the gauge swatch but it's always a good idea to do a gauge swatch when you are using a new type of needle or a new type of yarn. Many knitters experience gauge differences when there are needle differences or yarn differences. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.